Hey, good morning. It's Eric from Dust Haven, and it's a little cold and uh, windy, so hopefully you're not hearing the wind. Um, but what I'm doing today is this is kind of version two, or mod two, mod one, of the uh, little grizzly that, the little grizzly that could, the little grizzly that I built. So in the back there, you'll see that there's some expanded steel. And I was talking to um, my, uh, my buddy, uh, who actually works you know full time in heavy equipment operations and earth moving and things like that and uh, on the one hand he said hey that's actually going to work really great for the uh, loader that you built um, because a full commercial grizzly uh, soil sifter rock filter is pretty expensive um, he's like but that expanded steel is going to get torn up really fast he's like just from the rocks hitting it it's just going to chip into the um, chip into it and eventually it's going to break right and i get it that it you you could look at expanded steel as a consumable but it's pretty expensive i forget off the top of my head but it's probably at least 200 maybe two between two to three hundred dollars for a piece of four by eight expanded steel i'm, I'm really kind of guessing on that but it's not cheap you know it's not it's not a 20 dollar item so what he recommended was um to, which is a lot more kind of in line with the uh the stuff you'll see that's on the commercial side is taking some pieces here. Sorry, quick edit. Uh, taking some pieces here uh, like this. And uh, initially I wanted to go with uh, 3 8 but there wasn't enough 3 8 in stock. Um, so I went with the uh, quarter inch. So I got um, this quarter inch by one inch. And I've gone through and I've measured. I measured out last night. It's pretty cold, my hands were getting numb. But I managed to measure out last night where everything needs to go and I did the math. So the idea here is to be able to have spacing, is to be able to have one of these and then two inches and then one of these and then two inches of space and then one of these. And then from that, I'm gonna be able to get what we would call two inch minus. So it's gonna be um, everything that is essentially two inches or less. So if you're, if you're in and around aggregate, you're gonna hear this concept of inch and a half minus, two inch minus, things like that. And it's basically a way of saying that it's less than two inches, right? So that's, that's the idea. So with that though, what I get is on the, uh, the rock side over here is gonna be what you kind of could refer to as big stuff or riprap is a term that I've heard as well. I know I think that's more for like shoreline stabilization, but folks can use it for, to generally mean any kind of oblong sized um, rock that's smaller than a boulder. Um, but bigger than gravel, right? So that's, that's kind of falls into the riprap category. So on this side over here, I'm gonna get riprap. And then in that side over there, I'm gonna get my fines and I'm gonna get two inch minus. So anything that's smaller than two inches is gonna fall on that side. So I can use that riprap for certain things. Fill and gabion cages would be one of them. Um, and then I can use that stuff for direct filling of earth bags because a two inch uh, piece, of, um, piece of rock inside a bag is totally fine. Um, and then if I wanna rerun it again in order to uh, get um, a real fine material, I can just take that expanded steel, strap it right back on top, right over the uh, bars that I'm putting on, and then I can get three products out. So the three products, again, I can get riprap, shooting right off the side there, and then I can also get um, fines with uh, two inch minus mixed in and then if i process it again i can get um i can get my actual super fines that i want and i think that's actually probably going to be better in the long run because um the like right now that's inch and a half screen and um excuse me half inch and half inch for plastering would mean that i could put a one inch layer down but i really want to go tighter than that so i really probably want to get myself like a quarter inch expanded steel if such a thing exists i get to sort that out too um so, so that's what's up. And then the other uh, part too, that I was talking to my buddy about again, who does this stuff for a living, is I was kind of showing him, I was like, yeah, the rocks are really flying off the edge there. And he's like, yeah, that's true. He's like, but once you put this, uh, this thicker metal up, he's like, you can get your bucket, instead of approaching it from the sand side and getting blasted by all the dust, which is a problem that I had before, he's like, you can approach it from the rock side and then you can basically take like, if this was the bottom of the bucket, and he's like, you can take the bottom of the bucket and kind of lightly scrape against these bars a little bit, you know, maybe backed off, something like that, and work it, um, and have that, um, 
have that smaller stuff, the two inch minus and fines, work its way down. And then when you back the bucket off, it's not, because when I, when I come at it from the top, from the, the sand, the smaller side, my bucket egg, you know, entry or exit is up here. So it's a lot of energy for that piece of rock to fly all the way out. And that's why those rocks are flying all the way out here. But if you work your bucket maybe down a little bit lower, right? There's just a lot less gravity for that rock to go into kind of free fall and fly all the way back. But I just basically don't want big rocks hitting my tractor. So that's something I'm still gonna work with. But according to my friend, that gives me some options as far as what I wanna do. So um, the other uh, part that I wanted to add in here too is uh, for, for buying metal. Um, if you get into welding, uh, you can usually find like little pieces of welding of, of metal supply like at a Home Depot or at an Ace or something like that. There'll usually be like a little a little stand with a couple pieces, maybe up to a quarter inch. It's about as big as it gets. Um, but past that, you actually need to go to like a metal supply store or like a building supply store that specializes in metal and has um, just has this kind of materials laying around. So, you know, I'm pretty fortunate that in my area here, which is um, the, the mountain range that uh, sits between California and Nevada, there's a great building supply shop that has this stuff. And then they also have a, um, a chop saw. And that chop saw, uh, you know, for me to cut, because I had to make about 30, 30 pieces. So for me to cut those 30 pieces would have taken a while. And for those folks, they were able to actually take like you know, cause these come in 20 foot lengths. They were able to like put all the 20 foot lengths in together and just, you know, bang, 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 just chop through several of them at the same time. So what would be a two hour, realistically, probably a two hour cut job for me, uh, for them took about five minutes. And, uh, you know, it, it costs like an extra $6 or something like that. So think about that. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're actually gonna have this stuff, if you, if you need to have some metal made, um, take advantage of the, uh, the tools that they have at the uh, supply stores. And then also remember that no matter how much metal you cut or however much metal I cut, I will never cut as much metal as the guys that work at the cutting shop <laughs> at, the, at, the, uh, at the supply store, because that's, that's what they do. And they've got a you know, 10 horsepower chop saw that can just you know, cut right through things pretty quickly. Um, so I got, to, I got to take advantage of that, which I'm pretty stoked about. So that's about it. So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean this sucker up and uh, you know, clean it up, clamp things on, and start welding. So um, that's how that's gonna go. All right. So this welding process was a little bit uh, worse than my previous attempt because it was my first time running it off the generator, which didn't have enough power to run the arc for more than maybe five seconds before it would start to lag and then the arc would drop. And then I also had my 10 pound spool loosen up on me, which caused me some problems. So I learned definitely check all your stuff before you get out into the field. Um, and the generator can do little like better than a tack weld, but not much else. So got it on there, um, but definitely you need to have a better power system for doing bigger projects in the field uh, later on. So I also learned that the wheels that I put on, the little axles and wheels, although cute, aren't really useful and you need a loader to work with something like this anyway. So I realized that I could just stick the, the bucket in in the front and then grab the bar stock that I put on and then the uh, angle iron that comes down at the or angle steel that comes down at the 45. Uh, you gotta make sure though that going downhill, you wanna back down hills, um, going up, you wanna go up really carefully because it's very front heavy and that's a pretty dangerous position for a loader. So you, you don't wanna put yourself in a situation where you tip over and if you do tip, you wanna tip like six inches and just you know put the load down and not um, have something more catastrophic than that. So I'm trying to be mindful of the wind as well and the placement of this. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I can't wait to actually get started uh, using it. And I will continue to uh, post more updates. So, yep, this is Eric from Dust Haven. And do good work that you'll be proud of. Take care.